Hi there, welcome to the Schwoven's Nest. My name is Sandra. Today I've got a couple of thrift store flips for you and I'm starting off with this what I think is a pantry box. It was $3.99 at Value Village and it has this felt lid that I think was meant to possibly absorb some of the moisture and keep things fresh. Well, it's handmade but not my style. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white and give it a couple of nice coats. I'm not going to do the interior right now because I'm going to be doing that a different color. I've been using folk art home decor chalk paint lately and I really love the texture of it and it covers in one coat really well. So I'm going to use this to paint the complete interior, the bottom and the sides of this box. I wanted to add some handles for a little bit more of a farmhouse look. So I'm just using my cordless drill with the largest drill bit that I have. I believe this is about a quarter of an inch. And I just drilled two holes on either side and then on both sides of the box. I'm using some of this white rope that I got at Michael's on a big spool. I'm putting some scotch tape at the end of the rope so it's easier to feed it through the hole and then I'm going to simply tie a knot on the inside. I wanted to let you know that today's video is also part of a challenge that's hosted on a monthly basis by Deco Easy and Ginger Chick Rehab. If you have not seen those channels, you need to go check them out. Yanni and Diane from Deco Easy do some amazing and adorable crafts. Yvonne does a lot of thrifting and furniture makeovers on her channel, Ginger Chick Rehab. I'll have both of them linked in my description box. This is a vinyl cutout from My Cricut Joy. And this is the first time I'm using vinyl as a stencil. I have to be honest with you, I didn't like the process. It was really long and I probably won't do it again. I'll probably stick to using either decals or I'll cut out a stencil on either the plastic or some uh, cardstock and that will be the easiest thing to do. There was just way too many steps to get this vinyl created onto my project. Although when I was completed and done with it, I think it turns out absolutely gorgeous. So I've peeled off the transfer tape and here is my stencil. I'm using a makeup sponge and Maui sand chalk paint from Folk Art. It's a dark charcoal gray and I'm going to make sure that I get all of the letters really well. One thing that I really like about using a stencil vinyl is that you won't get hardly any bleed through, especially if you make sure that it's stuck down really well. So my letters come out really pretty and there's lots of crisp lines so this is something that I did enjoy even though making it was a pain in the butt. Now I'm just peeling off the vinyl stencil and these things grip like the dickens so you have to be really careful and I was crossing my fingers the whole time that it wouldn't pull off too much of the paint but you can see all the vinyl that's being left behind. I'm going to have to take my little weeding tool and weed all of that off so that's another step to getting this stencil created. I love how it turned out but it was a lot of work. Using some fine grit sandpaper, I'm just going to go around the top and bottom edges to bring out some of that wood look to make it look a little bit more rustic and used. I'm also going to take the sandpaper across the letters very gently just to give them a little bit more of a faded look, although I really liked how crisp they were, but it really makes it look a lot more authentic and vintage if it's a little bit faded in the lettering. I'm using a distressing technique that I found a while ago. I only use this for wood and what I'm doing is taking a screwdriver and actually scraping off some pieces of the paint so I can get down to the bare wood. When I use sandpaper, it ends up scuffing all of the paint around where I want it distressed and I didn't like that look. So I figured out that this is a good way to just literally get the marks where you want them and the rest of the paint around the areas won't get too scuffed up. 
I really love how this project turned out and I'm actually going to keep all of my little pieces of fabric and yarn and different things that I need for crafting in it. Project number two is this Lazy Susan. I'm always on the lookout for these because they are really good sellers. I'm going to take some tape and mask off some stripes and it's really easy to get it straight because the wood grain on this, the sections, you can see them are straight across as well. My go-to chalk paint for white is Linen White from Rust-Oleum. I really love the color of it. It has actually more of a gray white tone to it, so it's really pretty. But I've also been using the Folk Art White Adirondack, and I like that one too. The texture and the thickness of that paint just lets you cover all in one coat and it's really good but the linen white works really well too. I am going to go around the edges a little bit. I'm not going to do underneath at this time but I will be cleaning the bottom up later when everything is dry. The second color I used for the bottom was Maui Sand by Folk Art. It's a little bit of a dark gray color and I forgot to hit the record button when I was painting that, but you get the idea. Anyway, I'm going to take the tape off and then I'm just going to let it dry before I move on to the next step. I'm using this Americana gel stain in the color Walnut and it goes on really nicely. I'm using a really rough brush because I want to get the effect of wood grain and I'm going to go ahead and just apply that to the whole strip. To make the lines in between all the colors stand out, I'm using my Craftsmart paint pen in the color black and a ruler and I'm just going to draw a line right where all of the colors meet just to make it a little bit more crisp. Using some black paint and my chip brush, I'm just putting a small amount of distressing on the gray and the white and I'm going to just hit the edges a little bit too just to make them look a little bit more distressed. I like having some kind of tray on my dining table to corral my salt and pepper and all of that, but I do want to have some type of word on it, so I'm going to be putting the word serve on it, and I'm just going to freehand it with my craft smart paint pen, and I'm just going to start with the E at the end and work myself backwards to the S at the beginning of the word. I like to put things a little off kilter. If you watch my channel, you know that I do that all the time. I don't like things centered necessarily all the time, and I do like to freehand a lot of my work. Once I've got the letters the way I want them to be, then I'm going to take my pen again and do some accentuating to them. I always thicken the line going down. Right now I'm going down on the E and then that's the line that's going to be a little bit thicker and then I will just touch up the rest of the lettering. I'm going to give this a sealer with polycrylic. It's a crystal clear finish and it's in a matte shine so I really like this one. It works really well. One tip I can give you is to make sure that you let your project cure for 24 hours before you start putting the sealer on. I have had instances where I haven't waited long enough and the sealer reactivated the chalk paint and pulled some of it off. It happens especially with stains like this stain in the center here. I would have to wait till that's fully hardened before I put a sealer on top because otherwise I'll just end up pulling all of that stain right back up again. Because that's a water-based stain and it's just kind of sitting on top right now, it didn't actually penetrate the wood. So it's different if you're sanding things down and you're making sure that the stain can get all the way through, but that's just a tip that I learned that I wanted to share. Thank you. 
I'd like to thank Deco Easy and Ginger Chick Rehab for hosting this challenge. It was a lot of fun participating. If you like what you saw, I'd love for you to stick around a while. Hit that subscribe button. Those two black arrows will show you exactly where to click. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.